This is traditionally called like vendor lock-in. People want to protect against vendor lock-in. I like to refer to it as the data roach motel. Basically your data goes in and it doesn't come out and that's what you want to safeguard against, right? Because ultimately it's your data and you want to be able to do anything you want with it freely. And then the other problem with vendor lock-in is really price. If they have you locked in and they decide to raise their prices and they start to become not competitive with the market, you need to be able to move to another vendor to go seek out a better price. And the way to safeguard against that is to essentially adopt open standards and open protocols that make it easy to you know, send the data in, but also to extract it and just share it with other systems. Apache Arrow is a specification for in-memory columnar data. It's designed as a format so that you can do quick analytics over it and you can have zero copy semantics to transfer this data to other systems. That makes it so you can interact with a big data system or a data warehouse and a data scientist writing code in Python and exchange that data very quickly and do processing against it. Apache Parquet is a persistence format. So basically it's a file format on disk. It is optimized for compression. It's a format where you can store columnar data and also structured and nested data types. As a file format, it means you can exchange the data in bulk with other systems. The formats have been around now for about seven or eight years. They originated at companies that were already large, right? Parquet originated at Twitter and Cloudera. Arrow originated at Cloudera and then some other vendors. But the thing is they've gone on to take on lives at other large vendors. At this point, People at Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Apple, Tencent, Alibaba, all of these companies are actively contributing to these projects. In order to future-proof your use of technologies for doing analytics and time series and real-time analytics, choosing open data standards that allow you to represent the data in a format that's readable by other systems or exchange the data and extract the data in bulk when you need it to write into other systems is a way of doing that. One of the other things that's key is basically creating your own layer that exists between your systems and the vendors that you're using, right? You creating a proxy layer between how you interact with their systems gives you ultimate control between where you write data to, where you pull it from, and you can basically change vendors at will. It still takes effort, but you have a choke point where you control the relationship. It's basically code that you control and interaction that you can control and change on the fly. The reason why Arrow and Parquet are considered safe technology choices is one, as standards, they've been around for a while, and more and more companies have adopted them. Because they're part of the Apache Foundation, there's no one single vendor that controls the project. Anybody can contribute to these projects, and in fact, we at Influx Data have contributors to Arrow directly as a result of our efforts over the last three and a half years building InfluxDB3. So there's no vendor lock-in with these formats because any vendor can contribute to them and become active members of the community. Real-time capabilities matter in the time series use case because you're building monitoring and operational systems where you need to take action on things happening within milliseconds. Scale matters because there are an infinite number of things that you can measure at any level of precision. And the more observations you can make, the more accurate you can make your systems, and the more action you can take to improve your systems over time. With version three of InfluxDB, there were a number of problems we knew we had to solve. High cardinality, we wanted to bring in greater third-party integrations, right? Support for SQL as a first-class query language. We also wanted to support keeping your data in the object store. When we looked at all of these things, we realized that essentially we we're going to have to rebuild the database from scratch. We were going to have to re-architect it. We looked around and thought, well, what technologies can we use at this stage that will help us go farther, faster, and also integrate with the broader ecosystem? So we saw Apache Arrow as a project with its subcomponents, Data Fusion, Parquet, Flight SQL. And we made a bet early on that those technologies would basically be the open data stack. They'd be the composable data stack that other people would build analytic systems on. So our goal really is, you know, we want to build InfluxDB3 to solve the needs of our customers and users, 
but we also want to use these open technologies and help drive them forward because we realize we benefit from other people contributing to them, right? It helps make our product better and it helps people out there in the world who want to build their own systems based on these things. Our key wedge into this market is the real-time capability, is the fact that you're writing data at scale, observational data of any kind, and you want to be able to query it immediately and you want those queries to return in hundreds of milliseconds. If you're building an application to monitor systems in real time, whether it's machines, sensors, network equipment, servers, or applications, InfluxDB is designed for this real-time use case. So reach out, get in touch with our sales team, you can test out the tech and see if it works for you. Thank you.